piece that I'm providing for everyone is how they executed the attack and who executed it. And all these other people that are circling around it, if they, that's why I wrote the book, so they could, they could take that, that piece and put it in and continue on with it. But definitely, the, especially the, the major networks are getting their pipeline of information through a real small tube. And whatever CBS gets, NBC gets, and Fox gets, it's the same story. You know, it's from unofficial sources, and, you know, we can't tell you who told us this, but this is, you know, people believe that. They believe that, that whatever comes over NBC is, is gospel. And, um, but when we check it, it makes no sense at all. On the cockpit floor, the two pilots were dead or near dead, bled out from savage wounds to their throats. Hani Hanjour, the novice pilot from the same hometown as Saudi Arabia's Prince Bandar, was in the left seat. Blood was all over the instrument panel as the big 757 leveled out at 7,000 feet. Hanjour could hear the flight attendants and passengers screaming behind him from the passenger compartment. As he turned his attention to the autopilot, clicking it off, at 9.30. First time in the cockpit of a Boeing 757 and Hani Hanjur has complete command of the half a million pound aircraft, using the autopilot like most of us use the TV remote control. Then again with the skill of a pilot with thousands of hours at the control, Hanjur descends to 2,500 feet through an absolute perfect 330 degree right turn, placing the aircraft on course with its target straight ahead through the center of the windshield. Now everybody with me on this? This is the same pilot we're supposed to believe could barely get through training in a single engine, you know, Cessna. Anjur then opens up the throttles to full power and pushes the yoke into a dive towards his target. Suddenly all hell started to break loose in the cabin. The ground proximity warning system began screaming landing gear and flap warnings very loudly. Whoop whoop, too low. Whoop whoop, pull up, whoop whoop. Over the last five miles, the plane continues gaining airspeed. 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. Almost 300 yards a second, and at that incredible speed, Hanjur levels the enormous plane off inches from the ground for a perfect torpedo shot on the 90-foot west wall of America's military headquarters in total control of the aircraft as it explodes into a 200-foot fireball, killing 189 people. You know, I have 15,000 hours in heavy jets. And even in a peaceful setting, I would find it hard to match that performance. Uh, he had said to his friends and associates uh, before he was killed that he was sitting on a bombshell, some kind of information that was going to change everything, and he was going to be publishing this in his next book. That whole summer was like, uh, like a fog. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I suck it was hot. Thank you very much. Thank you, sweetie. Thanks. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, buddy. It's good to see you. You too. Mm. Go ahead, sorry. Don't think you're uh, attracting too much attention with these cockpit stories? Mm. I want to attract attention. You're doing a good job because uh, I'm hearing some rumblings. Oh. You're starting to piss some people off. Good. You know, they got this thing called the, uh, the Patriot Act. That's uh, meant to deal with people like you. You're not worried to be seen with me, are you? We go back a long way, pal. Yeah. <laughs> I love you too. There's not a day that goes by 
that I don't wish that life could be that simple again. For us. For them. Yeah, I'll see you later. All right, thanks. Thanks. Hey, Mike. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Chris, see you later, Chris. Be back in the truck. Get a dress. Sit down inside of it. And make it get in the truck. I'll be right with you. How you doing, Rich? Yeah, man. How you doing? Uh, okay. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. See, we're another guy from SEAL Team Six got killed. Yeah, a training accident. <laughs> yeah. Parachute fail. You know those guys, right? You're not worried about another soccer dad, are you? <laughs> oh. No. What's behind all these SEAL team accidents? Uh, too much loose talk about Bin Laden or not Bin Laden. That's that's what I'm hearing. Jesus, Marsh. Listen, you don't want to be seen talking to me about this shit. Yeah, Let's not. do this another time. Okay. Assignment update 200013-154, code black sensitive. Target Phillips Marshall, 1259 Scandalwood Drive, Murphy's, California. Status temporary surveillance only, pending further instructions. Looks like another box of Kleenex. Chris, grab my cell. Got it. So how's this jumble? Really? They're upset over that? What? It's mom. She said they're upset about some new alcohol law. Dad wants to talk to you. Take over for me. How's the spice queen? It's mom. There was an article about you in the international paper today. No, actually, yesterday. About me? About your book reading. What did it say? Well... Uh, they said you were a hero. They said you were one of the only Americans willing to stand up and tell the truth. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. For Al-Qaeda. <sighs> doesn't any of this worry you, Marsh? Of course it does, but it doesn't mean I'm going to sit there and bury my head in the sand. Well, what about our children? Chris is an amazing soccer player, and Megan's closing in on 500 Facebook friends. I should never have let you send me here. Focus on business. Everything else is a distraction. You're sure the kids are going to be all right? You spoke to Chris. Megan, your mom wants to talk to you. Yeah. What are you having for dinner? Pasta. No, not penne. Spaghetti. Oh, oh that sounds good. You're sure everything's going okay? Everything's fine. Okay. See? Everything's fine in paradise. So stop worrying. Just concentrate on business, okay? Okay. Bye. Hey! Jerk! Hey, Dad, he just messed up my blog! It took me an hour. You're trying to tell us that this guy is the one that found holes in the U.S. military air defenses? You know, that, that would really be embarrassing to some of these Air Force generals that, you know, have gone to military school all these years. You know, that this guy figured out, oh, this is how we can penetrate the U.S. air defenses. Small town. Everybody knows everybody. We're gonna stand out. You know, I love molds. I don't understand what the difference between a shake and a malt really is. The difference is that molds are better. <laughs> That's not a difference. Yeah, I know you've heard this before, but if you need to take these for back pain, no alcohol. All right. Mixing them with alcohol can be very dangerous. 
You're right, Doc. I have heard that before. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Is that him behind us? Son of a bitch. I'm gonna pull over. Federal agents. <laughs> federal agents, huh? What are a couple of federal agents doing dragging a piece of shit like that? Can we speak inside? What's this about? Sir, we're aware that you're one of us. I haven't worked for Uncle for 25 years. Used to be a pilot for Barry Seal. You saw a lot of shit go down. I wrote a book about it. Can we speak inside? No, no we can't. Not a lot of furniture for such a nice house. Nice picture. Yeah, Pinal Air Park, what about it? Your last two books on 9-11. We read them. Yeah, nothing new in them, just speculation. It's not speculation. There's no proof of that. So? We'd like to keep it that way. Did you receive a package in the last day or two? Contain a photograph, a highly classified photograph. Thought you'd like to hand it over. This conversation's over with. Now get the hell off my property. This ain't gonna fly. You sure you won't reconsider? For your own sake? Sorry for the wasted trip, boys, but get the fuck off my property now. Don't you guys have some homework to do? And I have to say that Marshall did tell some of his friends that you know, he wasn't a paranoid person, but he's on occasion he would mildly say, "Yeah, I gotta always look, uh, look at, <laughs> look behind me. I gotta always worry uh, about my safety." <laughs> hey, Mark. Congrats on the soccer win. Thanks, neighbor. The garden's looking great as usual, huh? Yeah, uh, too much time on my hands, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Retirement sucks. That back acting up again? Yeah, weight of the world. Never lets up. What's going on? I've been doing a little research on my new book, and... I came across something that proves what I've been saying about 9-11 for the last five years. That's big. Yeah, well, maybe I've been doing a little bit too much talking. Two agents showed up asking me questions. Oops. A good friend of mine warned me. <laughs> I started to upset some people. Official people? Mm -hmm. Black? Yeah. So you were thinking? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, a few years ago, I bought a Glock. Nice gun. I know here. Yeah, but didn't have any ammunition for him until yesterday. Obviously, you think this thing is serious. You got a couple of guys showing up with badges. That's, you know, I'd say that's pretty serious. You pull your Glock on them? <laughs> no, I told him to fuck off. Good for you. Well, anyway, I was just going to ask you to keep an eye on the place for a little while, just in case, and, you know, if you wouldn't mind. No problem. The neighbors all say he was great and super nice and didn't even keep his gun loaded and said he was being followed because of his book, The Big Bamboozle. Philip Marshall about Saudi Arabian intelligence tied into the U.S. government carrying out 9-11. Listen, the guys were just snooping around. The kids are in no danger. Why do I ever listen to you? What the hell am I doing here? You're there because you need to become independent and you're there because I'm in support of that. Where are Chris and Megan right now? They're on Facebook. This, this is what I'm talking. You are an unfit father. Well, I'm the only. 
only one they've got. Well, I don't like the idea of federal agents snooping around our home. Well, I told them to fuck off. Wonderful. Wonderful. I swear, if anything happens... Relax. Listen, you're going to be here in a few days. The kids are going to be with you, and you're going to be ready to get on with your new life. What happened to the pilot that I married? <laughs> he was put out to pasture a long time ago. Don't worry, please. What's with your sister? She's a girl. So who are those guys at the door? Uh, hmm. Do you remember a guy by the name of Madison Freeman? Yeah, you talk about him all the time. Megan thinks he's kind of a whack job. A whack job? Is that a joke? That's what mom calls him too. What does mom call me? She kind of thinks your head whack job. <laughs> really? Oh, jeez, my back. <sighs> so, if you can get high, why can't I have a glass of wine? Hey, wine's good for you. But yeah, everything in moderation. In moderation. Yeah, everything in moderation, Chris. So I guess I'm not a failure after all. I can think so. And everybody talks about what a loser you are. Everybody talks about what a loser I am. What do they say? Just how weird you are writing your books. Does your mother call me a loser in front of you? Chris. Do you think I'm a loser too? I think you're pretty good. You come to all my games. Does anybody understand what happened since a couple of years ago before you guys were born? Yeah, but no one can understand why you're not locked up somewhere. Do you know what I did way back in the day? Everybody knows. Oh, what? You were a contract pilot for the CIA. Hmm, how do you know that? I read your book. So then you know what happened to Barry Seal. Yeah, they had him killed. Barry Seal was going to tell something to the world that would have embarrassed some very important people. So what does that tell you? You're next? <laughs> no, that they're hiding something, something very important, right? Like what? Like they're not telling the truth, like always. And they keep getting away with it. So? So what does that tell you? Uh, they made it all up so no one would find out. Hmm. So you are my son. Woody! Yes, my angel? Be right there. That's the bad girl, right? She just had sex with one of the boys. Dad. It's the bad girl that always gets killed first. He's right. Careful, Megan.
Be right there, my angel. Abby Adams, Andrew Cumming, Christopher Phillips, Christopher Phillips, Hey, Marsh, it's me. I just got your message. Uh -huh. Give me a call. Hey, Chris! What's up? Chris and Megan were in school today. He's not answering his phone. Did you try the bell? Yeah. You gotta get down here right away. 1259 Sandalwood Drive. My neighbor is lying in a pool of blood in the hallway. What about Chris and Megan? You go on home now. I'll wait here for the sheriff. He's dead, isn't he? Look, this is no place for kids, okay? Go on home. One home! I'll take care of this. He's just lying in the entry in a pool of blood? He's been shot in the head. Oh my God. This doesn't happen. This just doesn't happen here. You called 911? Over an hour ago. My neighbor is lying in a pool of blood near his front door. What'd they say? To be patient and stay away from the house. Isn't that odd? Oddness doesn't begin to describe it. Oh, Jesus! What? Look. Oh, shit. I can't stand it. Call again. I just call. <laughs> Call and tell them that there's someone in the house. I'm going over there. You want to end up like Poor Marshall, you stay right here. Call.
Marsh, where the hell are you? Hey, if I don't hear from you by morning, I'm getting on the next plane to Sacramento. That doesn't scare the shit out of you. I don't know what will. Call me. Who do you think it was? Do you think it was them? The killers? Who else would be sneaking around the house with flashlights? What? Marsh was afraid something like this might happen. I feel like I let him down. Oh, for God's sake, why? He asked me to watch the house. Check the back. It's been 18 hours since my first call. There were people in the house last night, people with flashlights. We were terrified. Everything's under control now, Mr. Green. Woody Green, we live right across the street. Okay, thank you. I'll need to get a statement from you later. Marsh is lying right by the front door in a pool of blood. Sir, the back door downstairs is unlocked. No signs of forced entry. Sergeant, you need to take a look at this. Two kids in their family room. shot the pooch back in one of the bedrooms. Much spirit in the faces of 14-year-old Michaela Marshall and her 16-year-old brother Alex. The two students from Bret Hart High in Angels Camp leave a whole community in mourning. It was friends of Michaela and Alex who called the Calaveras County Sheriff's Office saying they hadn't seen the two since Thursday. Deputies discovered them dead in their home in Murphy's, shot by their father while they were sleeping. Their father, Philip, then turned the gun on the family dog and finally himself, say deputies. All right, Roger that. Yeah. All right. Marsh was worried. He asked me to watch the place. He asked me the afternoon before it happened. Mr. Green, I'm gonna to have to come back and ask you questions later. Right now, we've got our hands full. Calling Marshall Phillips. Who the hell is this? What? Hello? Look at all the antennas on that one. He really pissed someone off. Who needs all those antennas? Hello, this is Sergeant DeWitt. Sergeant DeWitt? Sharon Phillips, a man answered the phone at my husband's house and said to call you. Why are there strangers in our home? Nothing to see here, folks. Go on home. Who are you? I said go on home. This is a crime scene. Aren't you going to ask who he is? I know who he is. Who? Guy in a dark suit in a big SUV. 
with a dozen antennas on top. Tonight. It says Phillips filed for custody of the children back in 2008. It says Phillips was stalking his wife and children. And that she was afraid for the safety of the kids. It says Phillips was mentally unstable and heavily medicated when he threatened his wife's life. There was an emergency protection order issued. Who knew we had a monster like that in this town? He left threatening messages. He always seemed so nice, too, you know? Yeah, he was. You the knew him? Girl phone, Phillips's he was my best friend. Telling them that she was a of her you get the death threats. I get the death threats. The audience out there doesn't understand. This is real. Wayne Madsen. Well, I went out to Calaveras County, Alex, with a uh, very skeptical about what the police said, that in this case, Calaveras County Sheriff. Coming back, uh, there is absolutely no way I, 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 that this man, Phil Marshall, uh, killed his two kids, his 17-year-old son, his 14-year-old daughter himself, and his little, the little pet Shih Tzu dog. Hey! Hey! What the hell's going on here? Cleaning! I can see that. The question is, why? Murder, suicide. County hired us. The county hire you guys? That's what I said. Who are you? Uh, Madison, friend of the Marshals. I thought you lived in New York. I flew out last night. This seem as strange to you as it does to me. This strange? Well, first, second day after. It's probably illegal. The sergeant's report in the paper this morning made it sound like Marsh was psychotic. Murder-suicide, case closed. Yeah, but uh, you think there's more to it? Don't you? That's why I'm here. I discovered the body on Friday afternoon. Nobody showed up for 18 hours. Today it's all cleaned up. Case closed. Marsh killed both his kids, the family dog, then himself. You don't buy that? I talked to him on Thursday afternoon, the day it happened. He told me two agents had taken a visit. He pretty worried about it. You? Well, Marsh and I, well, yeah, yeah. We go way back. We did a lot of work together in the Dark Ages. Oh, Dark Ages. Yeah. Woody Green, glad to meet you. Did you read the sergeant's report? Down at the cafe, they were reading it out loud. Did you read the part about how Marsh died from a single gunshot wound to the right side of the head? Marsh died of a gunshot wound to the left temple, not the right. At Marsh's right hand. I know. I know. You ask me, that changes everything. I'd like to see uh, Sergeant DeWitt. You a reporter? Matter of fact, I am. The report on the uh, Phillips murder suicide was in today's paper. Yeah, I read that. That's why I'm here. Sergeant DeWitt isn't talking to the press. I think he talked to the Department of Justice. I'm Sergeant DeWitt. Uh, Madison Freeman. I'm investigating the uh, murder of Marshall Phillips. Well, you can put that away. You afraid to talk on the record? Absolutely not. 
Phillips. Phillips committed suicide. I, I was with him in, in New York about a week ago, and I spoke with him on the phone last Thursday. And he didn't in any way seem suicidal to me. Hmm. You came all the way from New York to tell me that. Marsh was very concerned about the fact that he was starting to piss off some very important people. He was despondent over his imminent divorce, using illegal painkillers. It kind of describes half of America. Well, <laughs> seems like you've wasted your trip. You've got a, a crew out there destroying every shred of evidence from a crime scene that's just about two days old. He killed his dog, killed his two kids, then he killed himself. What more do you want? I'd like to see the body. I'd like to meet the Pope. I could get a court order. Yeah. Well, you're wasting my time. You're misleading the public. You're trying to get arrested. I've got an eyewitness that says that the, the entry wound was to the left temple, not to the right. Your eyewitness is mistaken. Why would a small town cop change a, a murder to a suicide? I'll give you to the count of three. You must think you're on very firm ground, Sergeant. One. But I guarantee you. Two. You're not. I was there on February 13th. That evening, someone broke into Phil Marshall's house through the back sliding door and was looking for something. Somebody is after something that he has, and I think whatever it is, it, you know, it was so important, it was worth killing him and his two kids for. He was a nice man. We talked now and then, and his kids stayed over quite a bit. You ever hear anything unusual? Ooh, unusual? Gunshots. No. I See, I, I think you would. Your house is so close to his. But you think you'd hear if, you know, somebody was firing a gun in their house. I would think so. Do you ever hear any gunshots? Thursday. Thursday, Friday. The only gunshots we hear around here on TV. Mr. Freeman, this is Marsha's sister, Barbara. Hello. Thank you so much for being such a good friend to my brother, Mr. Freeman. Well, he and I went back quite a ways. Your brother was very concerned about what he saw happening to his country. That was his biggest complaint, that not enough people took him seriously. Well, it, it's a big leap for a lot of people. What are the neighbors saying? Well, nobody heard any gunshots. He was a great neighbor, and he loved his kids. I'd agree with that. There's a memorial service for Chris and Megan in hour. I'd sure like it if you came. I'd be honored. Thank you. Marsh was living on borrowed time. You know, I felt that way ever since he was flying for all that, you know, what's his name? Barry Seal. Do you know how many people been killed or disappeared? I was one of them. Oh, my God. You know, lucky to be alive. The only difference between Marsh and me, he was an eyewitness. I don't like eyewitnesses. I think this is where the service is, right here. I'm reading from a, from a posting uh, on a local uh, website out there. It says, if you're asked, and this is to members of the press, you tell them that Phil Marshall was diagnosed as a mentally ill person who got his hands on a gun.
Good morning, students. We've come together today to wish two of our own a tragic farewell. Their young lives snuffed out by a mentally unstable and delusional parent, their own father, Marshall Phillips. A man everyone thought of as a loving parent to our own Chris and Megan Phillips, Marshall Phillips was apparently under a great deal of stress. Despondent over his impending divorce from Chris and Megan's mother, his whole life appeared in complete disarray. By coming together today, perhaps we can begin to bid Chris and Megan an appropriate farewell. Hey, Sergeant, that blogger and some woman just pulled up. Afternoon, folks. Ma'am. I am Marsha Phillips' sister, and this is my house now. What are you doing in here? Forensics. Why? I thought this was a closed case. Not entirely. What then? I'll show you. The neighbors all state they heard no gunfire. Also, it appears as though the two children were asleep on the couch when they were killed. So what we're trying to determine is how loud the gunshots were from outside the house, and whether or not the second child had time to react after the first was shot. Since you're here, you're welcome to observe. No, 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 go, 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 go. Are we ready? Yes, sir. I'll observe for the family. Is the sound recordist ready? Yes, sir. Check the door. Door secure. This is the same type of weapon as owned by Mr. Phillips. All right, here we go. Time between shots. Two seconds. Coroner says both children had a blood alcohol content greater than 0.05%, so we can assume they were both sleeping soundly prior to the event. In two seconds, not enough time for the second child to react, much less defend himself. Or herself. Which one was shot first? No idea. Oh. I, and were there powder burns on either hand of Mr. Phillips? We'll have to look into that. Oh, that would be a good idea. Uh, you said also that there was a, a blood alcohol level of 0 0.05 or greater. That's right. Which was greater? The girl? Yeah. It was 0.07 in her case. So you ran a tox screen? A full panel? I'll have to look into that. And the fatal bullet, of course, you did a ballistics check and you found positively that the fatal shot came from Mr. Phillips' pistol. You don't like the way I'm running this case? No, no, I, I, I think you're doing a great job. Uh, you probably talked with the two agents that interviewed him on Thursday afternoon. Two agents? Yeah, agents, uh, intruders. knock him out with, with chloroform. He's then shot using a silencer. Same scenario in the family room. The two kids are killed the same way. But why would they kill the family dog? What are you doing? The fucking dog tried to bite me. Hurry up. You made that up. It's one of your conspiracy theories. So? Your murder-suicide scenario is nothing but a theory. I haven't seen any proof. There were no agents here on Thursday. No. This is my investigation in my jurisdiction. 
You want to challenge my findings, you take it up with the DA. Okay. Ballistics test, full toxicity panel, powder burns. Otherwise, I will. Sir, ma'am, have a good day. loud were the gunshots? Pretty damn loud. Loud enough for the neighbors to hear. Well, apparently, and I heard them. Yeah, it's just that DeWitt's police report made it sound like all the houses were far apart, and that's... Well, look at them. I obviously mean... not the case. Good morning. You are Mr. Phillips' sister? And you are... Yeah, a friend. Of course. Such a tragic end. May I see my brother, please? Of course, of course. Please excuse me for just a moment. Here he is. What is that? Your brother's remains. He was cremated early this morning. Just goes on and on. I'm sorry? Who gave you the authority to cremate the body? The coroner, of course. The two children were cremated as well. You asshole. Nobody called me. I'm sorry, the coroner said they were finished with... The... I don't care about no fucking coroner. What right does he have to decide? The night of the murder, Marsh emailed me about receiving something he said was sensational. I'm sorry. I don't want to think about it right now, Madison. What if what he received was the proof that he needed to tie everything together? I'm going to take Marshall home now, and then I'm going to move on. Thank you for being such a good friend. Hey, that's all we want. Excuse me for a minute. You cremated the bodies without the family's consent? Well, I had nothing to do with it. Oh, really? Who did? The county coroner. Ah, so all of the tests that we discussed, nothing? No. They took 20 boxes filled with all of his personal papers, his computers. That's the kind of treatment that you give to terrorists and serial killers. You know, you're really starting to annoy me, Mr. Freeman. You keep coming in here talking about conspiracy stuff, but you won't even look at the obvious. Uh, obvious? Well, I'll tell you what's obvious. Uh, Phillips suffered from bipolar disorder. He was often heavily medicated, depressed, and uh, mentally unstable. He was uh, despondent over his upcoming divorce. He was deeply in debt. His doctor had him under orders to see a psychiatrist. This is why he lost his job as a pilot. There was simply no evidence of any intruders in that house. Of course not. You had it all destroyed. Had the bodies carted away and cremated. And I'll tell you something else. He wasn't let go from the airlines because of some kind of psychiatric problem. You had a bad knee. Oh, come on. Since when's the Mercury concerned about a little controversy? It's about a major break in the 9-11 puzzle. Oh, he, he, s he said he had some proof. That's why he was killed. No, I don't know where it is. I don't know what it is, but I know that they were after it. Well, yeah. Yeah, sure. Of course. I'll be sure to stay in touch. There has been a, a real problem in lost evidence, lost clues, uh, and the uh, right now um, there, there's a demand for either the Attorney General of 
the state of California, Kamala Harris, uh, to launch her own investigation of, of Marshall's death uh, or the U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder ordering the FBI in to, to conduct an, a, an independent investigation. Uh, that is the only uh, thing that can be done now, although critical evidence has been lost, unfortunately. Any news? Um, the coroner had Marsha's body and both of the kids cremated. Oh, my God. Poor Sharon. Sharon isn't even here yet. How could they? Well, it's called destroying the evidence. Now there's nothing left. Don't make Madison stand in the door. Come in. You had coffee yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, good. Good, thanks. I've been thinking lately about some of the stuff in Marsha's books. Oh? What stuff? Well, the story he used to tell about an Arabian prince who uh, was practically adopted by the Bush family. What, did, he, did he tell you how that got started? It was one of his favorite stories. Oh, the stories. That's all we got left now. I never heard it. The president and James Baker apparently convinced this Saudi prince that Arabia, Saudi Arabia was vulnerable to an air attack. Bandar was the top gun in the Saudi Air Force. So when he brought this news home to his father, the king, he was given a carte blanche to take whatever steps necessary to protect the kingdom. Bandar contracted for six Boeing jets fitted with AWACS radar. Now, the cost of one of those jets came in somewhere around a hundred million dollars. So, the whole package couldn't have been more than one billion, including all the electronics. But the price tag that Bush and Baker brokered to the Saudis came in at 80 billion. 80 times the market price of the aircraft. Think of the commission. It was a time when Prince Bandar became officially part of the Bush family. Bandar Bush, they called him, became a regular Thanksgiving guest at Kinneybunk Port. How can they do that? I, it's highly suspicious, but uh, I'm not surprised. And I'm so sorry. Barbara was here yesterday. She took Marsha's remains with her back to New Orleans. Asshole. Shut up. You're both assholes. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, Madison. Shut, Shut up. up. Sharon. Sharon. Sharon, you know that Marsh would have wanted us to talk. Can you bring Chris and Megan back? We have. Nothing to talk about. Sharon, they're trying to convince the world that he was crazy, that he murdered his own children. You know he would never hurt them. I don't know anything. He was obsessed with conspiracy theories, destroyed our marriage. It turned him into somebody I didn't want to know. He didn't kill your kids. He might as well have. 
He was one of the most courageous men I've ever met. People believed in him. Look what it got him when it mattered. When I found the Congressional Joint Inquiry Report and learned that as soon as these guys hit the ground in Los Angeles on, on January 15th, you know, they were met by employees of the Saudi Aviation Authority. Hey, Leo, thanks for coming by. Yeah, what's up? You knew Marsh Phillips, right? He flew right seat with me for a few years before he moved up to Captain. And, and you made a uh, trainer. Right, so? I'm just curious about why the word of a commercial pilot isn't taken seriously when he tries to tell them about the, the amount of training it took for the 9-11 hijackers to do what they did. I mean, just... If you just got a couple hours in a single engine Cessna, you're not going to jump into the cockpit of a Boeing 767 and fly it right in. Of course not. So how come that's not part of the national um, conversation? Well, Marshall tried to make it part of the conversation. Now he's dead. Then it might be why. Commercial pilots with thousands of hours have tried to duplicate the 9-11 attacks and simulators and 99 times out of 100, they fail. Big passenger jets aren't built to fly at the speeds the terrorist pilots flew those jets. Push them close to 500 miles an hour, the wings start falling off. Can I try it? Eh. Simulator, simulator. The TSA doesn't let just anyone climb into the big simulators. Did Mars try it? Of course. Yeah, we both did. And he couldn't do it? I'm telling you. Look, okay. Imagine you're behind the wheel of an 18-wheeler, okay? You think you could steer a big rig through a jiffy loop at 150 miles an hour without scratching the side? I know, it's insane. Yeah. All right. But somebody flew those planes into the towers. And they had to get training somewhere. Well, now you're on the right track. But don't waste your time looking at simulators. No, those pilots had to have training in the real thing, and don't let anyone tell you different. You got a chance to do some research for me? Uh, look, I, I need you to find out how many flight training schools there are in the United States that train Arabic-speaking pilots on the uh, Boeing 757 and 67. But not, not just simulators, right? uh, the real deal. License and registration. Why, Officer Dewitt? I'm assuming that there's a reason you're pulling me over. License and registration, please. It's a rental, you know. I still need to see the registration. You here on vacation, Mr. Freeman? You know why I'm here. 
You want to attract a lot of attention from law enforcement? Is that what you pulled me over to tell me? No. I pulled you over because you have a broken tail light. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Fix it. And he just, uh, he just pulled me over for no reason. For no reason? Well, it was a city street. I, I wasn't even doing the speed limit, the brand new car. Can I see the citation? He didn't give me a citation. He just gave me a warning. For your broken taillight? No. The officer broke the taillight. You know, I find that hard to believe. Me too. That's why I'm here. Do you have any witnesses? No. So you could be actually making all of this up? It happened. You don't have any proof. I have a broken taillight. Then the officer did have a reason to pull you over. No, no. Like I said, the officer broke the taillight as like a warning. A warning? Uh, yes. For what? I told you. I'm a reporter, an investigative reporter. I'm here covering a pretty controversial story. Mr. Freeman, I can see you now. District Attorney Dewar, how can I help you? Well, I wanted to file a complaint of harassment against one of your police officers. Harassment? Yeah, I explained all of this to your assistant already. You spent the last three days looking into a murder-suicide which occurred in Murphy's late last week. Oh, so you'd know all about this? My understanding is that you disapprove of the way Sergeant DeWitt has handled the case. Yes, and with good reason. Is that right? Uh, yes, it was Officer DeWitt who pulled me over. So either Officer DeWitt is uh, extremely incompetent or he's involved in some effort to try to keep some facts from me. Let me ask you something. Do you think the government has a right to protect the public from dangerous information? Unless it involves the murdering of U.S. citizens. So you're one of those people? One of those. Truthers, anarchists, conspiracy theorists. Yes, I, I'm one of those who considers it his patriotic duty to question authority. Why would anyone want to dredge all this up so many years after the fact? And that's... Uh, all I'm going to get from you, isn't it? Probably. Unless you don't get that taillight fixed. Have a nice day, Mr. Freeman. There's only one company in the U.S. that trains Arab-speaking pilots in big jets. It's called Doss Aviation, based in Colorado Springs. They train pilots out of Pinal Air Park in Marana, Arizona. According to Marshall, Mohammed Adda received at least part of his training from professional aviation with the Administrator Doss. Also very interesting, Special Forces trains out of Pinal. Yeah, well that makes sense because Marsh said that he had a contact in Special Forces there and was sending him something. The year after 9-11, one of the owners of DOS was appointed a federal judge. Ho, ho, ho. Marsh is getting too close, wasn't he? Be careful, Madison. How can I help you guys? We need to talk to you. About what? About what you're after. What do you mean, what I'm after? The reason for your trip. We read your blog. Your friend Marshall Phillips, bragging about blowing the lid off 9-11 in his next book. Does that have anything to do with the reason he was killed? We're interested in what you think. Your fans, huh? Excuse me. Why are you here, Mr. Freeman? This is a very public place, and unless you want some unwanted attention, I suggest you just back the hell off. You talking to me, hun? No, I'm talking to these two bozos behind me. You're the only bozo I see.
sorry. So, what could we have done to reduce the chances that Chris and Megan Phillips would become victims of a psychopathic parent? What would have tipped us off? Well, we know that Marshall Phillips wrote controversial books filled with conspiracy theories about the 9-11 attacks. Did that raise any red flags for anyone? Now, the Phillips neighbors all say that Marshall Phillips seemed like a perfectly normal guy. Is a normal person addicted to prescription drugs? If your parents were taking prescription pain medication on a regular basis, wouldn't you be concerned? You never acted weird or anything. The FBI has instructed local police departments to treat anyone harboring conspiracy theories about the 9-11 attacks as a potential terrorist. What did Marshall Phillips do? He wrote books promoting conspiracy theories. Wouldn't that raise a red flag for you? Tip you off that someone might just go off and start killing people? Everybody liked Chris's dad. We all thought he was kind of cool. So does anyone have any questions? Holy. When was the last time you saw Chris Phillips? I don't know, the day before, on my way home. You one of Chris's neighbors? We're friends, yeah. We're gonna stop by later and have a little chat with you. Oh, cool. I know. You don't think Mr. Phillips killed those kids, do you? Uh, hey. I, I just thought you wanted to talk, but not in front of the cop. Now go. Just go. Come on. Get. Uh. Mr. Freeman's got a new friend. Who's your friend, Freeman? Was that whole show in there? Did you put him up to that? Or, or, or was that your program about the murder-suicide? What, you think that kid's gonna help you find what you're looking for? Oh, it's, it's pretty obvious that I'm not the one looking for something. Something like what? You haven't found it yet. That's why you're still here. Maybe he hid it in a secret spot. Oh, yeah. Along with the secret tape that got Barry Seal killed. You were a part of it. Not even close. You know, Marshall wouldn't speak to us either. Big mistake. <coughs> he want what he's hiding. You understand me, motherfucker? <coughs> <coughs> I've been expecting you. We can't talk here, it's not safe. I've been hassled by law enforcement all day long. About 10 minutes ago, two secret agent types threatened my life. Why? I uh, don't think they've found what they're looking for. Well, whatever it is, it isn't here. There's nothing left in the house. Everything's gone. I know. I know. I looked myself. But I don't think the killers were bicycles. The one who found Marsh. Yeah, I know him. You know where he lives? I think so. Show me. I don't know how much time we've got, so here, they're gonna know my car. Why don't you take this and just go around the block? I've got it.
Yes. Hello, I'm, uh, I I'm sorry to bother you. Earlier today, I met uh, your, your son, and there was something that he wanted to tell me about Mr. Phillips. Mike and that poor boy were in the same class together, but that's all there is to it. We don't want any trouble. Yes, but ma'am, I don't... Hey, mister! You were at the cafe this afternoon. Yeah, right, right. And those two guys, they're looking for you. I mean, they're here, right now, trying to find you. Son of a bitch. I thought I was clear. Oh. You're not the same one. Same one. He said he wanted to talk with Mike, and you are? Federal agents, ma'am. We'd like to talk with Mike as well. What in the world about? About his friendship with Chris Phillips. How do I know you're not the bad guys? Well, the, the good guys, they want everybody to know the truth. And the bad guys, they want to keep the secret. That's what got Mr. Phillips killed. What about Chris and Megan? They're just collateral damage. Collateral? They probably wouldn't have been killed if they weren't at home. Those fuckers! When, uh, when you spoke with Sergeant DeWitt, you weren't exactly truthful then, were you? So what? Well, I, I know you were at the house and saw your tire tracks. So what if I was? You were the one with the flashlight. Yeah. You wouldn't let me see anything the day we found him. So I came back that night. I didn't do anything. I just took a few pictures. And then you left? Yeah. Yeah. What aren't you telling us? Nothing. I left right after. What would you do, seeing your best friend like that? And you only took three pictures? Yeah. Let me see your phone. You didn't send them to anyone? Post them on Facebook or Twitter? No way. What are you doing? That's my phone. You send them to me, and then you trash them off your phone. Somebody sent in that Madison Creek pictures. Pictures of what? Pictures of dead people. Don't hang on to anything that they'd want. No, I mean it. No pictures, nothing. Well, that's no fun. You want to have fun, go to a skate park. All right, look, they're tracking your phone. Now go, get rid of it. Go, 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 go. Oh, federal agents! Where the hell is he going? What's the matter, a kid on a bike too much for you guys? Give me your phone. I want phone. Oh, Hurry up. Oh, yeah. For him. He sent you pictures. Pictures? Sent me pictures? I don't think he sent me pictures. He may have sent them to India or Bali. Bali. It's so. Little prick. Think he gonna run us on a bike? Goddamn kid! Freeman's following us. Son of a bitch. This should be a law against guys like that. Where is he now? Straight ahead, trust me. You little fucker. Alright, he's gonna cross the 
railroad about a mile ahead of here. Michael English, where is he? He doesn't have anything to say to you. Look! No, you look. The night those two men came, Mike was in his room doing his homework. And now two federal agents are in the hospital because your son attempted to destroy evidence. Well, isn't that just too bad? Ma'am, you're going to force us to knock your door down. But we'll give you to the count of three. One. Michael. Two. Michael. Our founding fathers anticipated that someone was going to try to take over our government, that they were going to try to get an absolute power going. And they left us with the tools that are still here to be a democracy, you know. And all we have to do is use it. And it's very simple. Get it into the court system. If you get it into the court system, and you can start with Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Bring it in there, now Now you open it up, and then we can go in and find all these experts that said, okay, there was a stock trade here. Where did that money go? Why didn't we track that down? All those trades could be tracked down. But if you have a Justice Department that's under the intelligence community, they're pretty much handcuffed. They're not going to do anything about it. So it's, it's, it's back to us. If we want a democracy, if we want to live by the Constitution, it's our duty, it's our duty, and, and the voices are starting to come forward now, and there's a lot of them. There's so many great witnesses that are available for a trial right now. It would be very entertaining to see this come down, but really, that was covered by the Founding Fathers. They anticipated this type of a, a takeover, and, and they gave us tools to fight it, and they're still there, and all we have to do is demand it.